Welcome to The Checkup. I'm Aurora Aguilar, Editor of Modern Healthcare. Joining us today is Lloyd Dean, CEO of Common Spirit Health, one of the nation's largest health systems serving patients in 21 states. In November, the system announced it would achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2040. The goal is to address underlying causes of health inequities that cause some people in marginalized communities to have poor access to clean air and safe drinking water and who also increasingly are affected by extreme weather caused by climate change. The efforts are in line with the Paris Agreement. Now Lloyd previously joined the UN-backed Race to Zero campaign and is a member of other similar industry initiatives. This is especially important since healthcare contributes an estimated 10% of the nation's carbon emissions and 9% of air pollutants. While there's been a noticeable uptick in climate-related moves by industry stakeholders, this year, few have been as ambitious and goal-oriented. That's why I'm eager to talk to Lloyd Dean about Common Spirit's plans. Welcome to the checkup, Lloyd. Thank you, glad to be, glad with, to be you. with you. So quickly, let's go through the four steps that you'll be taking to achieve this net zero goal. Yeah, well, we are doing uh, a number of things, but in particular, the four steps that are we are, are are doing is number one is that we are making sure uh, that uh, we uh, set uh, ambitious uh, goals and like as you mentioned uh, since healthcare is one of the uh, major uh, contributors and we are doing the following number one is that we are upgrading our fluorescent lighting LED technology uh, within our our system and particularly our hospitals. Uh, and therefore, we will save over 41,000 uh, metric tons of, of CO2 uh, every year. And that's equivalent to uh, enough electricity to, uh, if, you, if you will, power 7,500 uh, homes. Uh, secondly, uh, we are participating in a solar power initiative uh, in uh, Arizona, and we've acquired um, a significant uh, and made significant investments in a solar uh, farm uh, that will help uh, remove uh, six to 8,000 metric tons of, of CO2 uh, annually. Uh, we've installed solar panels throughout uh, our hospitals in uh, a number of, of our states. Uh, but most importantly, we are taking this a very a serious because we know uh, that we can uh, make a difference. And there's no question that there's an unbreakable uh, connection between the health of our planet and the health of our uh, people. And finally, um, we, are, we think that caring for Earth is part of caring for the people who rely on us. So um, I do recall that there was a mention in a news release about investments. Can you talk a little bit about what the, the system plans on doing as far as um, divestitures or anything that sort of might relate to financial decisions that you'll make? Yeah, we've uh, committed to uh, achieving, you know, a 50% uh, reduction in terms of our operational uh, emissions, but we have set aside in addition to that. Uh, significant uh, capital that we will be uh, investing uh, in uh, these uh, initiatives. So how do you plan on keeping track of these goals and um, is there a cost incurred in doing this type of initiative? There is a cost uh, for us to uh, make the infrastructure investments to be able to uh, monitor and to calculate uh, you know, what uh, we're doing and how we're uh, doing. Uh, but we believe that uh, we have the capabilities to absorb those uh, costs in that the uh, the yield on those kinds of in, in investments. And uh, we are planning to invest uh, a multi uh, a millions uh, in terms of uh, insist in ensuring that we achieve uh, the goals that we set. And um, you have a leader, I understand, in charge of inter environmental sustainability efforts. Um, I, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. Could you talk about that role and what metrics that leader uses to measure success? Yeah, uh, we do. Uh, you know, we take this very seriously. So we have identified a specific uh, uh, individual within our uh, org organization to to focus uh, uh, on this. And we've set, as you mentioned, some specific uh, metrics uh, for that individual uh, to monitor. 
Uh, we uh, see uh, significant savings uh, in the offering of, of to the right of $10 million, and that allows us to be able to uh, finance uh, that individual's role. Uh, but they will have the full responsibility uh, for all of Common Spirit, ensuring that the metrics that we set, the uh, programs that we have identified and are putting in place, uh, that we not only achieve those, but exceed those, and to ensuring that the entire uh, family uh, within uh, Common Spirit Health is not only aware of the goals, uh, but understand uh, what we want to achieve, how we want to achieve it. Uh, and they will be working with all of our individual uh, markets and our facilities to ensure uh, that we are successful. So, I mean, it's very ambitious and it's very admirable, but um, you can't do something like this alone. And so in the communities that you're in, are there any plans to affect any kind of policy um, or initiatives um, sort of at a, at a government level that might be able to kind of help you meet some of these goals? Uh, yes, uh, we know that we cannot do this uh, alone. And uh, as you uh, mentioned in your opening uh, comments, uh, we are a significant uh, participant, but uh, well, as well as a uh, key uh, voice in advocating at the federal level and at the state levels uh, for legislations and for programs that will help us ensure uh, that we, as a nation, state by state, community by uh, community, are addressing uh, this very important matter. The goal um, is to be met by 2040, and you announced your resignation recently. Um, and we have seen environmental efforts ebb and flow depending on the state of politics and the economy. So how will you ensure that this is part of your legacy and that it gets done um, in 2040? Well, thank you for asking that uh, question. And uh, first of all, I just want to say that I plan to um, uh, have this as a key focus of mine uh, through until I uh, uh, retire uh, next year. Uh, but more importantly, it's much bigger than Lloyd Dean. Uh, this is a commitment that we have made as a system and as one of the largest uh, health and healthcare providers uh, in this nation. Uh, this is a part, uh, an integral part of uh, our organization's uh, strategic path uh, forward. Uh, and we um, have moved this, this is at the board level, this is at our operational uh, level. And as you mentioned, achieving a 50% uh, reduction in our operational emissions by 2030 and achieving net zero by 2040, this is an organizational goal. Uh, I've certainly uh, embraced it and given my role as the chief executive, uh, have set forth um, you know, metrics and uh, accountabilities to ensure its achievement. Uh, but this is a common spirit uh, initiative, not a Lloyd Dean uh, initiative. And we are working with uh, other partner organizations and are happy and excited uh, and reaching out to others in the community to ensure that we address this important um, matter for our nation. So what steps would you encourage other healthcare leaders to take um, to become better stewards of the environment? Uh, number one is to, to be bold, uh, to set very specific uh, metrics. Uh, number two is to ensure uh, that they understand that they can't do this uh, alone. Uh, number three is to use their voice, their advocacy, and to uh, contribute uh, resources uh, to ensure uh, that we uh, address uh, this, uh, but also to um, start by being an example of themselves uh, and make sure that their organization, that their facilities are uh, setting and achieving uh, goals. And I think that will help us uh, get there. So, so I, we're in Chicago, you know that Modern Healthcare is, is headquartered in Chicago, yes. and um, I pass a lot of different systems in the city on my way from the suburbs into the downtown area. And I do see the impact and the footprint that a lot of these systems take in um, communities that, you know, are very often um, sort of in locations that have 
um, historically, you know, been also um, host to factories and things that, you know, really sort of are not very environmentally friendly as far as just like what they emit um, as they're doing their business. And so um, can you imagine a time when because of the impact that climate change has on people's health, that this would become a strategic initiative that would be more integrated into sort of like the annual plans or something that is just considered part of a hospital's overall strategic plan versus something that's kind of, you know, announced like this in your instance, where it's something separate that's not necessarily a part of other organizations' um, bigger goals. Not only can I imagine, and I think that if we are going to be successful in addressing uh, this uh, as a nation, uh, that we are going to have to be what I refer to as of a community, not just uh, in a community. And I think that uh, this cannot be some uh, by uh, uh, program, you know, bilateral uh, program, uh, that it has to be integrated into uh, the fabric of the organization has to be a part of our strategic uh, plan, uh, has to be one of the principal uh, initiatives that we have to improve uh, health. And particularly uh, given that we know that many of some of these high carbon uh, facilities and some of the most uh, challenging situations we have are in the most the poorest and the most vulnerable uh, communities. So I think everywhere that we are blessed to have uh, a facilities, uh, we must work hard to ensure uh, that we are doing everything we can and uh, being a voice and a convener and a partner to ensure uh, that the necessary change in these communities uh, takes place. But this cannot be uh, a program or just an initiative on the side it must become an integral part of who we are and on, on our quest to ensure equitable, fair, just, and quality health care for communities. So I mentioned that you are retiring and there are other things that I'd like our audience to learn from you before um, I before you take what I'm sure will be a very short break from working, <laughs> would you uh, be willing to join me for another conversation to discuss the unique leadership model under which you led um, the merger of Common Spirit back in 2019? I would be, I would love to have that conversation with you. You know, I've been around long enough to uh, have made some mistakes and learned uh, some things and would love to uh, share that. And I think that there are you know, our models out there that are certainly uh, timely in the environment and the world that we live in. And I look forward to, uh, at a time convenient for you, having that discussion. And I just want to uh, thank you and I want to thank Modern Healthcare for fo uh, focusing on this important uh, challenge that we are facing as a nation and that we are facing uh, throughout uh, uh, the world. And we can do better, we must do better. Uh, and I think by keeping this in the forefront of our, our, our thinking and, and, and presenting uh, conversations like this, uh, hopefully it will spur and inspire others to uh, do everything that they can, because this is our, right now we only know this is, we're in one world and we have to uh, be accountable for ensuring uh, life and sustaining life uh, for uh, the you know future generations, and we in healthcare can and must uh, be a leader in change. Well, thank you for being part of leading that change. Stay tuned next week for part two of this conversation with Common Spirit CEO Lloyd Dean, who among his countless accomplishments is a perennial on the 100 most influential leaders in healthcare annual list for modern healthcare. Lloyd, thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, and thank you. I'm Aurora Aguilar, and I appreciate you watching The Checkup. Thank you.